Hello and Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to another tutorial of object oriented programming. So, I am with you in this Shahjadur Ahmed. Today, we are going to talk about lecture 4. And in lecture 4, we are intended to cover some of the very important topics of object oriented programming, such as scanner class, array, type conversion, and math class. Uh, so, let us begin our journey. So, scanner class. Scanner class is used to take input from the user. <coughs> that means, if you are dealing with a code that is need to be take use, uh, input from the user, then you must need to use scanner class. An object of scanner class is created to read input. So, whenever we uh, import scanner class, then a object is created to read the input from the user. Uh, Java use system out to refer the standard output device and system into standard input device. So, uh, in order to take input from the user, we need to use system dot in and Java uh, in Java scanner class use system dot in actually. Uh, import Java dot util dot scanner package need to use in order to invoke scanner class. So if you are taking input from the user then uh, at the beginning of the code after declaring the package or after uh, before declaring the class you need to add uh, uh, or you need to input uh, the scanner class or scanner library into your uh, code so that uh, in order to use the uh, or in order to take input from so some commonly used method for scanner class there are uh, a lots of um, uh, um, uh, methods in scanner class but commonly used scanner class uh, methods are next byte next short next in next long next float next double next and next line so there are a lot of them so um, we actually uh, try to understand how and what kind of method we need to use um, by practicing them actually so example of a scanner class uh, take two integer a uh, number as input and calculate their sum so actually we are dealing with a code that will take input from the user to input and then add those two input and provide the uh, summation of those two input so as we said first of all we have to import the java uh, class the scanner class so uh, the way is java dot util dot scanner and uh, after that uh, this one is our class add to in uh, int integer then uh, we have started the uh, main method and then um, as we said that um, scanner will uh, create an object to take an input so the way is a, um, this one is our reference variable so scanner input new scanner and system in as we said in previous slide that system in is need to be used in order to take input so First of all, we have provided an uh, a message to the user that enter first number. Then the user enter first number, and we put it in um, a variable which is called int a. And because we are taking uh, integer type value, that's why we actually use int next in. If we are dealing with a float type value, then uh, it should be input dot. Uh, next float or uh, input dot next double and so on okay so because we are taking in type input that's why in, uh, uh, input dot next int okay then uh, another message in uh, input second number when user got this then he uh, he or she inputs the second number and we put the second value into um, into a variable called b and it is also in type so input dot next int <coughs> And then we have provided the summation of those two values. So we know that uh, we can calculate uh, the value in a single line by using the output. So um, we added the value of A and B. So the um, suppose in first try user uh, inputted 5 and uh, in next one user inputted 4. So the result should be 9. So this is how actually we use a scanner class and this is how we actually input scanner so um, uh, just after watching this please uh, you, you practice by yourself so that you can understand so now let's move on to array so we all know what is actually array array is a, a data structure so the array 
which is to a fixed size sequence collection of elements or values of same time so so uh, it is all, always store uh, a value or collection of value of same type um, an array is used to store a collection of data but it is often more useful to think of an array as a collection of variable of same type as we said that actually it uh, store a collection of variable a number of variables but those variables are actually has to be same type instead of declaring individual variables such as number one zero number one and so on to number 19 that means there are uh, hundred variables individual variables we declare only one array variable so we can do that in by declaring only one variable which is array variable such as number and uh, type should be number and use as um, number zero number one so I I this one is actually called indexing array indexing and so on so um, in particular case in the previous case uh, um, we need to declare 100 different variables or 100 uh, variables in the code so can you imagine if we declare 100 code it will be a larger uh, 100 variable it will be a larger code but we can do it in a single variable a array variable so this is how actually array is very uh, useful to use in a code so how to declare uh, array variable in uh, java so that uh, the uh, syntax is first of all data types and then the array symbol and then array name so let us see an example so data type so data type is int so this one is our data type and then the array symbol and then array name so this one is our array name so uh, we can put array name any anything uh, we want but uh, just remember the identifier things so this one is um, this this is array but also this is a variable so we need to uh, follow the identifier naming uh, concepts so then we put uh, five values in array um, so <coughs> this array size is by default um, is become five the size of this array is become five there is another way that we can uh, declare uh, the size of the array as well that means how many values or how many content there will be in the array so the way is first of all uh, declare the data type and then declare the array name and then just new int and the size of the array that means uh, in that uh, in that case uh, in the previous case the size is uh, five because there are five elements but now we are not saying what are the elements rather than we are saying what should be the size that means um, this array can store 10 different values okay so um, this is how we can declare array in different 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 places so let us see an example uh, two way of using array suppose uh, we are declaring an array and we are putting uh, five values so the size is uh, array size is five and then uh, we are actually trying to uh, print all those value by sequence so we can do that by individually but it, it will become the code very large so we are doing it by using a loop for loop so the sequence is uh, we will start with uh, zero index and then uh, it will run till the array length is finished so this is a concept that array dot length so it will automatically count the length of array because when we are putting a value we are not mentioning what is the size but if we say that array dot length it automatically uh, uh, read the size as it is the uh, as the array variable having a size of 5 so be length the value of length become 5 so it will start from 0 and end uh, start with 0 to 4 0 to 4 and um, each of the time it will uh, in, uh, it will increase the value of i so first of all it will print the first value that means uh, array i so a r the first uh, the array indexing is start with 0 as we know so the zero index value is 10 and then same thing array and then the second index is array index 1 and the value of array index 1 is 20 and so on so it will print all those value of um, this array and the next example is also 
same but we can do it in different way like um, for int i then uh, the, we have to use this symbol and then error then it will also print the same thing but uh, but not mentioning the indexing rather than mentioning the values so we can do it in this way as well so another example in this case we have also used the um, uh, scanner classes so take input from user and then using uh, also the using array so this one is our class name array class and then we move on to the main method and then uh, as we uh, learned from the previous slide to take an input we have to use scanner input equal to new scanner then system dot in this is the way that uh, a, a, a the java compiler is prepared to take input from the user then we have provided a message to the user then that uh, first of all enter the size of the array so suppose um, after getting this uh, message user inputted 3 so now the size of array become 3 so we put the size into a variable called size and uh, we have declared the variable as in that's why we are putting next dot in, uh, uh, sorry input dot next int and then um, we have declared a variable uh, array which is in type and uh, new in size so now the size of the array become because the value of size is 3 so uh, now the size of the array is become 3 and then in next uh, statement we have uh, provided a message to the user that enter the value of the array so now user know that he provided the size is 3 so so he can or he she can only provide Th three values into the array so suppose after getting the second message user provided three value th those are 20 30 and 40 so in sequence those value are stored in array and now uh, so in first index uh, like in um, array array 0 the value is 20 and array 1 the value is 30 and so on so just uh, um, uh, as we seen from the previous slide we just uh, using loop to print all those value so um, after uh, uh, printing uh, after doing this we will get a um, first of all we are actually mentioning the index and uh, then we are mentioning the value of the index so uh, this is how the output will look like the value of the array uh, index 0 is 20 and the, the value of the array index 1 is 30 and the value of the array index 2 is 40 and so on so it is very um, this this code is very precise because now uh, we are the user is one who is decided that how many values he need to or she want to store in the um, array so this is a very good example of using an array so let's move on so our next topic is uh, type conversion so what is type con conversion assigning a value of one type to a variable of another type so uh, suppose uh, uh, we have a variable first one is a, a, a integer type variable and um, we have another variable which is a float or double type variable but we uh, we want to convert the value of uh, double or float type variable into integer type variable let's see an example then it will be clear to us if we want to convert a double value to an integer value then we have to do this so first of all we have to put a, a, a double value that is double d d is a integer a, a variable which is double type and as we know that we can uh, apl apply fractional value to a, uh, a double uh, variable so the value is 4.99 and now um, we said int which is integer type variable int i equal to then uh, this is the rules of time conversion int and then d d is this one so what 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 will happen it will uh, convert convert the type uh, of this variable the double variable into integer type variable so as we know that in integer does not work with fraction value so the value become cut down or the value is type converted and it become 4 so if the value is um, um, 
4.9 and so on so it will become 4 actually uh, so now after uh, doing this type conversion the value of i is now actually 4 ok so let us see a broader picture of type conversion with an example so you can see that uh, we have declared a variable d and and the put it uh, put it a var value of 100.04 and then we have declared a variable of integer type which is i and then converted the type of uh, double variable into integer so now we are uh, first of all we are uh, giving the output of d variables and then after that we are giving the value of var uh, value of or output of i variable so what happened the uh, double value will be exactly same as it is initiated in the beginning but as we have type converted the double value into integer so as we know integer does not work with fraction value so it become 100 so uh, in our particular case if we need these things that we have to make a double variable into integer or integer variable into float and so on so we can uh, use the type conversion things so now let us talk about uh, the uh, the math class so math class is actually used to do mathematical things uh, when uh, when we are doing dealing with a mathematical conversion or mathematical input output thing so uh, as we know that whatever class we are actually uh, dealing with we have to import the class uh, in the beginning of our code so the way the rules of importing a math class is uh, as same as we have done with scanner class so java input java.long.math so the java.long.math class contain method of performing basic numerical operations such as elementary exponentiation logarithm square root and trigonometric functions and so on chart of commonly used method in math uh, in math class so uh, there is actually a short list but uh, you can see there are a lot of methods include in math class so we have actually just ex uh, just include here some of the very commonly used math functions or math method like uh, math dot um, abs and the uh, variable so it return the absolute value of a uh, of x and math dot ceiling it return the ceiling value of x math dot floor return the uh, floor value of x uh, math dot minimum math dot maximum so i'm not uh, actually reading the um, the uh, concept of all those math function but um, we'll uh, we'll deal with it um, time to time whenever we need to apply the any of the uh, math function or math method so uh, yeah, you can see that um, we also can use the uh, power that means uh, square root or something like that so all those all kind of function that is needed to perform a mathematical fun function or uh, perform a mathematical calculation are there so just we need to find out that which function or with math which method we need to use in which place okay so let's see some of the uh, functions so you can see uh, in the beginning of the code we have imported the math class and then um, we have declared uh, three of the variables one is integer ty uh, integer uh, type and another is uh, uh, these three are integer type and this one is uh, double type and then uh, let's find out what will happen if we use some of the math class like math absolute so uh, what math absolute does it actually converted a, a negative value into positive that means absolute means a positive value so converting a value into a positive value so first of all math uh, math um, absolute x so we can see that the value of x is 175 it is already a absolute value so if we does that um, uh, this uh, here we have use, uh, uses this method but this one is actually our masses so if we does that it will uh, it still remain 175 because it is already a uh, absolute value but what will happen if we going to make um, use of the absolute function with u y so you can see now we are using y so you can see from the uh, declaration the initial value of y is a negative value so if we use the absolute 
function with y so you can see the negative value become the positive so that's how actually absolute thing can have um, work actually so next one is ceiling so ceiling is means suppose you have a variable and say uh, double type double variable double i and the value of double i is say 4.4 uh, sorry 4.4 so if it is 4.4 then um, uh, if we do it as uh, uh, ceiling then ceiling means um, uh, ceiling means it will convert it into 5 and if we apply um, the floor value with uh, the floor function with this value then it will become 4 so ceiling means we can consider it as a roof and this one is our floor so this value is converted into uh, um, into 5 when we actually apply ceiling and this same value will convert it with into 4 if we uh, use the floor methods okay so uh, we have applied the uh, ceiling method with the value of x so we, uh, you can see the value of x is 175 um, <coughs> sorry we uh, we have applied the val uh, the ceiling value with uh, value of it should be a value of a so the value of a is one uh, two five point nine so it become uh, because we are dealing with ceiling so it become one to six as we said here and then next one this math dot max so we are finding uh, who is the uh, biggest value or wh which is the max value between x and y so you can see that the value of x is 175 and the value of y is minus 8184 so definitely the max value should be 175 so you can see the output is 175 so that's how the uh, some of the math function or math method are used or uh, the uh, math methods are works so will apply uh, many many of the math methods as we face uh, or as we needed those to apply in our code so we can uh, do some uh, practices from uh, from this uh, overall lectures or uh, whatever we learn from this find like find absolute floor ceiling round and square root value of the number and like find minimum and maximum and so on so just try uh, try this one so that we can uh, or you can understand that how how your learning process is working actually so i guess that's all from uh, lecture four inshallah we'll meet in next lecture so till then everyone stay safe stay home allah hafiz assalamu alaikum <laughs>